Good morning, everybody. Good morning, it's JPR, and welcome back to another video. Ever since the dawn of 1996, there has been one constant rule in this world. There will be Pokemon that are broken, and there will be Pokemon who suck. Ah, oh, wait, I guess it's actually two rules. So today, we're taking a look at all 18 types to determine who is the worst Pokemon of every type. Oh, who is we, you ask? Well, I'll just let the other guy do the talking. It's me. I'm Wee. In case you haven't seen me around before, my name's Hoops and Hip Hop, and I do the whole Pokemon YouTube thing just like JPR. And, well, frankly, I heard he was going to be talking about sucky Pokemon, and I just thought it would be fun to join in. We're not going to approach this like animals, though, because we do actually have some basic ground rules that we set up to help us determine who is really the worst of the worst. That's exactly right, because today we are only considering fully evolved Pokemon to be the worst. For instance, you may think that the worst water type is Magikarp, and yeah, you aren't wrong. But it does evolve into Gyarados, so one could argue that it's actually not all that bad. So Hoops and I are going to take turns presenting our cases for the worst fully evolved Pokemon, or Pokemon that just don't evolve at all. Let's get into it. Now, normal type has a lot of contenders that come to mind, so we gotta dig deep on this one. I think many people immediately think of Dunsparce for this one. But heck, even he gets some mileage at a body slam and bite due to his ability Serene Grace, which makes paraflinching the opponent an optimal strategy. There's also Spinda, but it at least has the combo of Super Power and its hidden ability Contrary. So I think the clear answer for this one is Delcaddy. It has an abysmal base stat total of 400 and one of the worst assortments of abilities out there. Sure, it has a decent move pool via TMs, but most normal types do, and all the rest of them can dish out way more damage than Delcaddy. This Pokemon appears to be built more for contests than battles, but even then, its former signature move, Assist, is hardly any good in contests. This is just a mediocre Pokemon from every angle. The grass type is up next, and, well, let's just cut to the chase and reveal that Parasect is our pick here. As a grass type, it doesn't help that Parasect is also a bug type, which were absolute garbage in Gen 1, so it's honestly just a product of its time. Basically, it's a fully evolved Pokemon with a base stat total of just 405, with 6 weaknesses, and 2 of those are also quad weaknesses. In fact, if it has the Dry Skin ability, then it's actually 5 times weak to fire, just in case you might have been thinking that it couldn't get any worse. There just isn't much of any reason to use Parasect as a Grass type when it's got this much working against it. The worst fire type in existence is easily Magcarga. Sorry, we're not reading ridiculous Pokedex entries anymore. All that matters here is the battlefield. This Pokemon is just way too slow with weaknesses that are all too common, especially water and ground, which he's double weak to. Colossal is pretty much the strictly better version of this Pokemon since it at least has a high enough HP stat to possibly tank moves it's weak to. Better is being used lightly in this video though. For the final starter type, we have the Pokemon all about love that everyone ironically hates, Love Disk. Simply put, Love Disk is a Pokemon with an abysmal base stat total of 330, and it doesn't evolve, it has no forms, or anything else of the sort to help out with that. It's just stuck being awful. It does actually have a decent ability in Swift Swim, but Speed is already Love Disk's best stat, and is its only good stat, as it's where almost a third of its base stat total is allocated, and therefore this does basically nothing to actually help the Pokémon. Who would have thought that the Pokémon centered around love would actually receive the least amount of love of all, both from Game Freak and the fans alike? It's a cruel world out there, man. A cruel world. Boy, Hoenn is on a hot streak here, because the worst electric type is none other than Minin. Now, in case you're wondering, Minin is basically a slightly more support-oriented version of Plusle, with lower attack stats but higher defenses. The problem is that even in the lowest tiers of competitive play, Minin is still a class by other support Pokémon, whereas Plusle can at least be a somewhat viable offensive option. Emphasis on the word somewhat. Don't get ahead of yourself, Plusle. You did not escape by much. Fact of the matter is, they are both easily the two worst electric types out there and the worst Pika clones by extension, but I'd say that Minin is just slightly worse. For the bug type, we've got none other than Plant Cloak Wormadam. 
Given that it has the same typing as our grass type pick, Parasect, this form of Wormadam also has a lot of the same problems. Six weaknesses, two quad weaknesses, two pretty common and accessible types, stats that aren't great, especially for a fully evolved Pokemon, and an ability that is just kind of a slap in the face. Anticipation lets you know when Wormadam is up against a Pokemon with a move that is super effective to it, or if it has a one-hit KO move. But, like, with six weaknesses, that's basically always going to be the case anyway, and can pretty much just be assumed. Which means that this ability is basically just a reminder of how bad this Pokémon truly is. So, while I'd like to say that the worst ground type is Wormadam's Sandy form, I think Hoops already summed up a lot of its bad points. So, I'd like to take the time to talk to you about Cantonian Marowak instead. Believe it or not, this Pokemon was considered one of the best attackers in the game in Gen 2. If Marowak used Swords Dance while holding a Thick Club, its attack stat would actually break the game's stat cap of 999. Unfortunately, that's all Marowak is known for. Aside from its immense attack stat when holding the Thick Club, it has nothing else to write home about. Its abilities aren't particularly impressive, it has low speed and HP, and while its defenses are okay, it's still getting 2 hit KO'd by most offensive threats. And in the main story, Marowak isn't even really worth using due to how difficult it is just to get a Thick Club. Sword and Shield is the only game where you can just pick one up out of the blue. In every other game, you had to rely on a 5% chance of snagging it from a wild Cubone which is a pretty rare Pokemon in itself. Honestly, not worth the effort at all. But yeah, Wormadam is still worse, don't get it twisted. For our Rock-type pick, we had to give it to Jotonian Corsola. Corsola as a Rock-type has a lot of similar problems that Love Disk had as a Water-type, but also just as a Pokemon in general. I'm sorry, Love Disk. It doesn't evolve or have any other forms, at least not that this version of Corsola can take advantage of, and that pretty much just leaves it to fend for itself with its not great stats, decent amount of weaknesses, and its pretty terrible stat distribution. All of its stats, other than defense and special defense, are pretty terrible, meaning that you would basically have to use this Pokemon to take a hit if you were going to use it at all. And no one is going to be using a Corsola as their designated bulky wall type of Pokemon. So yeah, overall, Corsola just isn't the best. Oh boy, there are tons of terrible flying types out there. Chatot, Lydion, Cantonian Farfetch'd. How am I supposed to ch- Oh wait, it's definitely just Delibird. He must be on Game Freak's eternal naughty list, because not only does Delibird boast horrid defensive typing, some of the worst stats in the game, only two moves it can learn via level up, but also these abilities? Insomnia is a hidden ability? This has to be a joke! They just gave it Vital Spirit a second time! Maybe he's just waiting up all night hoping that Santa will bring him some buffs? But honestly, Delibird is just a lump of coal sitting on your team. He's doing nothing for you. You know, for our fighting type selection, I felt I hadn't hated on this Pokemon enough already, so I figured I would come over to JPR's channel to do it, because the worst fighting type in our minds is none other than Crabominable. However, for as much as I dislike this Pokemon personally, it's for no other reason than irony that I had to talk about it today. Because opinions aside, this Pokemon just isn't good, especially amongst the fighting type. The fighting ice type combo gives it six weaknesses, which is definitely going to be up there for fighting types if it's not the most weaknesses for a fighting type already. It definitely doesn't have the best stats for a fully evolved Pokemon either, and since this Pokemon didn't make it into any of the Gen 8 games, your only option to use it at this point is in Gen 7, where it can only be accessed right at the end of the game by leveling up your Crab Brawler at what is basically Victory Road in Mount Hokulani. That leaves you having to deal with Crab Brawler basically for the entire game, who is cool, but also considerably weaker. And due to Crabomitable's weaknesses, and let's be honest, its appearance, it certainly isn't worth all of that trouble with all of the other fighting types that are out there. For Psychic, say it with me. Unknown. Okay, now that we got the Dawn fan out of the room, let's discuss the second worst Psychic type, because other than Unknown, the bar for this type is incredibly high. There are not a lot of bad Psychic types out there, but I'd say the next worst one is Hypno. It's just another mediocre support Pokemon with subpar stats and new abilities that actively make it better. 
I would say Giraffe Rig is lucky to be getting an evolution very soon to exclude it from this conversation, but honestly, I'd even say that Giraffe Rig is more usable than Hypno is. Especially in the main story where a lot of Hypno's best tools are typically locked behind late game move tutors. Hypno is pretty much never going to be in a situation where he's not outclassed by every other psychic type. Even when it comes to scaring small children in the forest, I'd argue Mr. Mime does that better. Poison type is next, and honestly, it's a toss-up for us between Dustox and Ariados. Similar to Parasect once again from the Grass type entry, a lot of what makes these Pokemon bad as poison types has to do with the fact that they are also bug types, and bug types that were introduced when bugs sucked a lot more than they do today. Additionally, poison wasn't the greatest back in the day either, meaning that these Pokemon had basically the two worst types in existence at the time they were introduced. Even with the modern buffs to these types though, these Pokemon just don't quite stack up with their peers, and ultimately, if we had to go with just one of these Pokemon as the definitive worst, it would probably have to be Ariados, since with Dustox, you can at least access it pretty early on in the Hoenn games, since it evolves at level 10, and at such an early point in the game, Dustox as a fully evolved Pokemon would be good for at least a little bit, whereas you can't get Ariados until level 22, and at that point in the game, there's pretty much no hope of this Pokemon being very useful at all. The worst ghost type, I would say, is Cursula. If it wasn't sad enough that this Pokemon is literally dead, its stats and abilities will certainly make you depressed. At a glance, its incredibly high special attack and special offense seems promising, but the abilities do not work with this Pokemon in the slightest. Weak armor will just make Cursula even more frail, assuming it's even able to take a single physical move to begin with. And the speed boost is doing almost nothing for it with its awful base 30 speed. Parish Body is more of an annoyance than something you'd actually use reliably, as it activates the Parish Song effect for both Cursula and the attacker. You can certainly argue that Bayonet is in contention for the worst ghost type, but at least Bayonet had its moment in the sun with its mega evolution, while Cursula is unlikely to ever see the light of day. Now, there were some options when it came to the ice type, due to how frail they are, but when it came down to it, since Crabbomitable is already representing the fighting types, I gotta give it to Avalug, and I'm actually going to give the honor to Hisuian Avalug more specifically. The regular and Hisuian forms of this Pokemon are pretty similar in terms of their stats, but Hisuian Avalug has two more weaknesses, including two of those being quad weaknesses, which makes it a lot less likely to be able to stay on the battlefield. On top of that, those weaknesses kind of put a bit of a dent in its super high defense stat, and due to its speed being terrible, it's going to be hard for it to even take advantage of one of the only other good stats it has, which is its high attack stat. Overall, there are just too many glaring flaws amongst Tsui and Avalug's offerings, which is why it's probably best to go with some other ice type instead. The worst dragon type is, surprisingly, not Dredigan. Not only does Dredigan have access to decent support moves like Stealth Rock and Glare, but with sheer force it's also capable of dishing out some decent damage. Even in Gen 5's main story, while it certainly doesn't have the ridiculous ceiling of Haxorus or High Dragon, it's definitely the easiest dragon to pick up and use off the bat. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about Turtonate. This Pokemon appears to be built as a tanky support mon, but between its subpar ability Shell Armor and the lack of good status moves it gets access to, this Pokemon is pretty much forced to act as an attacker with Shell Smash. But, as with a lot of other Shell Smashers, Turtonator's speed is still way too low, and it already has subpar HP as is. So it can't really afford to sacrifice its bulk. Even in the context of Alola's main story, by the time you're able to get Turtonator, all the trials and significant fights ahead are ones that Turtonator is going to struggle in. Do yourself a favor and steer clear. The Dark type is a pretty interesting case, but at the end of the day, Thievil takes the crown here, simply due to context. I was initially considering Cacturn for this spot due to the fact that it has seven weaknesses, but it does have some utility both as a Pokemon who can put down some entry hazards and as a solid main story Pokemon since in the Hoenn games it has an advantage against both of Hoenn's final two gyms. Meanwhile, Thievul is just kinda 
eh in all categories. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not going to be a Pokemon that you would use in a competitive setting like you might with Cacturn and its entry hazards, but it's also not going to be a Pokemon you would use in the main story of a game either. There are just better options out there in Sword and Shield, and it doesn't really give you an advantage against much of anything in the Galar games other than Alistair, but that's only if you're playing Shield. If you're playing Sword, you're gonna nope. get bodied by B and her fighting types. It's definitely not the worst of the Pokemon we've talked about today, but amongst other Dark types, it's definitely not a standout either. The worst Steel type is... well... Don't get me wrong, Wormadam Trash is pretty, well, trash. But surprisingly, Bug Steel is actually a really good defensive typing. It's only weak to fire. Granted, it's really weak to fire, but it can at least function as a wall, which is high praise for a video that's been so negative. So I'd say since it no longer has the Mega Evolution, Mawile is probably the worst Steel type at this current moment. And that's even considering this Pokemon has the best typing in the game and one of the best abilities with Intimidate. It's bad enough to where these amazing tools literally do nothing to improve its standing. Can this Pokemon attack? No. Can this Pokemon tank? No. Can it play support? No. Without the Mega Evolution, this Pokemon is completely hopeless. Even Wormadam has a niche. It's a terribly tiny one, but it has one. Well, Hoops, I'm sorry to take your easy one away, but what's another bad fairy type? Well, it's actually not hard at all to find another bad fairy type, because that is very clearly going to be Shinotic. As a fully evolved Pokemon with a base stat total of just 405, it's definitely not off to a great start. And then that is compounded by the fact that it also has 5 weaknesses. And to add insult to injury, one of this Pokemon's abilities, Illuminate, literally does nothing whatsoever in battle. And in fact, it also makes it twice as likely to encounter wild Pokemon outside of battle, which would not only be incredibly annoying, but that's also just bringing twice as many Pokemon to you that Shinotic is going to have to deal with with its bad stats, five weaknesses, and ability that literally does nothing to help it in battle, as we said. So it's pretty much just asking anyone who is willing to end its misery, and that is pretty much as sad as it gets. Almost as sad as this video being over. But don't fret, because if you missed it, Hoops and I actually did another collab on his channel last week where we discussed censored Pokemon content. So be sure to watch that one if you haven't already, and check out some of Hoops' other videos in the meantime. He makes some awesome stuff. But before that, be sure to leave a like on this video, it really helps me out, and subscribe for more videos just like this one. I'll see you guys next time.